are, you know, you know, you can blame media, you can blame, you know, a conspiracy theory, you can do all kinds of solutions, you know, come up with all kinds of rationales for why this kind of stuff happens. The fact of the matter is, there is a growing population of young Muslims that are turning towards the religion genuinely. They want to learn more about Islam, they've made tawbah from their previous lifestyle, and they want to become religious and better, and they're going online to find their religion. Because nowadays, the way to find anything is to go online. And groups that promote senseless killing in the name of Islam have a very sophisticated, very powerful social media and production machinery. They rival Hollywood. They're very, very good at what they do. There are studies on how sophisticated their marketing is, targeted specifically to young people that are looking for a religious education. So that the first exposure to religion these susceptible young people get is their version of Islam. You know, when a young man, for example, just to put this in, in closer to reality, a young man who wasn't very religious at all, the month of Ramadan comes and something hits his heart, he hears a khutbah or something, and man, I gotta change. I gotta become a better Muslim. And he starts Googling stuff and YouTubing stuff and you know, going on Facebook to find stuff, and he finds crazy stuff first. Because they've developed the machinery to be the first few hits. You see what I'm saying? And now they get roped up into, well, if you really want to be a true Muslim, then you have to do jihad. And to do jihad, you have to kill people around you. Otherwise, you're a munafiq, you're a hypocrite. Anybody else who speaks otherwise is a hypocrite themselves. They're all sellouts. And they're, they're basically not even Muslim. So the first thing that is fed to them is everybody else, even in the rest of the Muslim community, are munafiq. They're, they're as good as kafir anyway, so it doesn't matter what they have to say. So first you cut these young people off from their own community, from their own family. And then, it's easy now to manipulate them and, and fill all kinds of hatred in them. And you know, the, the, what do we do about this problem? Because it is a war of ideas. This is a battle for the identity of Islam itself. Those young people that, that fall into these traps, w because of low self-esteem, depression, psychological disorders, whatever it may be, but the ones that do fall into these traps, and these incidents occur time and time and time again. When this happens, we, we have to take a step back and say, what is the long-term solution to this problem? Because wallahi, when you and I start thinking about a short-term solution, you and I are in agreement there isn't one. There, I mean, this is not going to get solved tomorrow. You know? And we're holding our breath. May Allah not ha have another incident happen, but we're holding our breath. Because every few months there's something else. right? But, but we have to now think about the long-term solution. And the long-term solution is to actually redirect young people's minds towards a healthy understanding of this religion. A comprehensive, unapologetic, and a healthy understanding of this religion. Because until the Day of Judgment, there are going to be young people that are going to turn towards Islam. That's a fact. They're going to, they're going to come from every walk of life. Some of them are going to convert to Islam. Some of them are going to come from Muslim families that weren't very religious and became religious later on. And they're going to try to find out stuff about Islam. And the place, the playing field, and the, the, the space where they're going to find their Islam is going to be online, and it's going to be in the media. The, the open social media that's accessible to the entire world now. And if we don't win this battle on that space, if we don't provide a healthier alternative in that space, and we don't provide not just a healthier alternative, a more powerful alternative, something that a young mind hears, and they learn not just to accept the religion, but to think for themselves, to criticize, to not be manipulated, because at the end of the day, all this is is a kind of manipulation in the name of religion. That's all it is. These, you know, these, these poor souls are duped. You know, they're, they're played into. And I've, I've had the opportunity on many occasions to meet young people that have been hypnotized in one way or the other, and just after a couple of hours of deconstructing their sick thinking, they realize how they were taken for a ride. How they were manipulated in the name of Islam. They don't even realize it when it's being done to them. Well, we have to be smart enough to not only know that that's being done to them, but to provide a healthy alternative and not fall into the trap of refutation. The idea here isn't that we're going to condemn this group or that group or the other group, because you know what? That's what they want. They're waiting. They're already anticipating. They've trained their, their followers to say, watch, they're going to condemn us. And that just legitimizes you even more. They want attention. That's what they want. And what they can't stand is an alternative. Because an alternative takes attention away from them. These, these groups and these entities, all they feed off of is attention. All they feed, and they, that's what they train their followers to do, is to say, watch, this is going to happen, and now they're going to speak against us. And when they speak against us, told you the munafiqun will speak. You know, the hypocrites will speak. That's, that's their mentality, and that's how they're cultivated. So this is something that we as an ummah have to take responsibility for, that uh, until a normalized, a healthy, a, a, a solid education of this deen is not available at a mass level, 
that is accessible to young audiences all over the world, until then, young susceptible minds are in danger. They are in fact in danger. And that is something that we all have to take responsibility and may Allah Azza wa Jal help us overcome this challenge. And may Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, uh, uh, give the ummah steadfastness that we can stand by the principles of our deen. And yet, even when it comes to calling, if, if people that represent our faith, even though they don't re- represent us, another Muslim commits a crime, I didn't do a crime. My family didn't do a crime. My children didn't commit a crime. Somebody else in the name of Islam did this crime. But you know, the, the, the reality of perception is the entire Muslim community is held on trial. We're the ones that have to explain ourselves for someone we don't even know or represent in any way, shape or form. But regardless, we do have to take responsibility at least for how the deen is taught. And when the deen is being used to poison minds, the corruption of the deen is being used to poison minds, then it becomes the responsibility of this ummah to stand up for this deen, no matter what the cost and no matter what the consequences. You know, and this, it, it, it's going to require a lot of courage on our part, but it's absolutely necessary. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us steadfast once again, and our, our, our thoughts and our prayers are to the families of the, you know, and the loved ones of those who've lost their lives, Muslim or non-Muslim. Allah Azza wa Jal honored all children of Adam. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam. Sins and you know, good deeds and bad deeds and shirk and tawheed and all of that aside, the children of Adam are the children of Adam at the end of the day. And when Ibrahim alayhi salam prayed, he prayed for all of them. When he made dua, when he was building the Kaaba, he said, you know, Allah even described it, مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ amna." He was hoping that this would be a service, this is a place that all of humanity will have affiliation with. When the, when the angels came to destroy the nation of Lut alayhi salam, who argued on their behalf? Ibrahim alayhi salam. He didn't say, oh, those people, they deserve to be killed. Go, 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 please. Actually, why didn't you bring more angels to destroy them first? He didn't do that. He, يُجَادِلُنَا فِي قَوْمِ لُوت, Quran says. He argued on behalf of those people. Why? And we call ourselves the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So let's go back to the principles of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Concern for all humanity, instead of a condemnation of all humanity. May Allah azza wa guide us. In any case, let's begin 